Hey everybody, I'm gonna go over the lenses I've switched for the E2 3E camera, the Zcam E2 twins, and also a new purchase, the Zcam K1 Pro, which I got for $125 on eBay, which is shocking. And I'll cover that in a second and how all that unfolded. But um, I had been shooting the Zcam E2 with uh, Mikey 7.5 millimeter um, circular fisheye. It's a full frame fisheye, but it's just too difficult to deal with the distortions that you're that I'm getting. And I don't really want to have my player have to fix the distortions, which I'm using Whirly Gig, which is fantastic, but other people don't. And when you don't have all the configurations for the file you're going to play back, it, people can't really see what you're doing. So when you post a video, no one can really tell what it is because your distortions are so heavy that you're cor I'm correcting it in my player, but no one else is. So using the Laowa 7.5 millimeter, uh, it's, I guess, equirectangular. I forget the name, the word for the, the different type of lens, but it's not fisheye, whatever that is. But um, it's, uh, it shoots an undistorted image, which is parallel. Vertical lines will stay vertical across the whole span of the image sensor area. So that helps tremendously when you're playing it back in 3D because you just, only thing you determine is how far away do you want to be from that uh, image that you're looking at and then everything looks perfect. So that's a big change to this, but you know, still the Zcam E2, this monster here, you can get these used fairly cheap. Um, this whole setup was $2,000. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but you're talking about full-on cinema cameras, massive ability to shoot uncompressed images. Uh, the compression is extremely good on this thing. You can do use, it, most people use H.265 because it's efficient, still looks phenomenally good. And you don't really need to go to the uncompressed formats that you can shoot, but it does do ProRes. You'll gobble up your media. So I'm usually shooting H.265 on this thing. But if you're looking for 3, 3, any form of 3D, uh, I usually shoot like an in-betweener kind of 3D. It's not VR 180. I shoot 7.5 millimeter Laowa, that field of view, which is GoPro, basically field of view. Like a GoPro Hero camera shoots a very wide field of view. It's pretty much about like that. So the K1 Pro, uh, Zcam K1 Pro. So you can still buy this camera new for $3,000. I bought that one for $125 on eBay. So the way that happened is when I bought it, it came with two lenses that were all scarred up pretty heavily. And the guy that was selling the camera was selling it as parts because he didn't know how to get the thing to turn on. It has a little bit of an exotic power plug on the bottom of it. It's a four pin Limo FFA whatever style plug. So. It's unusual to say the least. Uh, half moon, four pin, it's not a two pin like on every other camera. But uh, of course I have that gear because I have the Zcam E2 rig and the parts are interchangeable and I know I, I knew I could power this up and figure it out right away. The funny thing is the body's in mint condition. It looks like it was never used even. The lenses are gashed up like crazy which makes me suspect that those lenses were from a different camera and they just bundled it all up and sold it this way. And the other tricky thing that people get hung up on with this particular camera is it requires external power, but it's not a big deal because you can just use an L bracket, you know, drill, I had to do a little bit of drilling on the L bracket just to clear some junk on here. It has ethernet. You don't even really need to use ethernet. It's nice to set it up initially to get the settings right, but you can just leave it. But uh, I bought a small rig NPF battery amount that takes Sony batteries, these things. And that just slaps on the side here, and you have a pretty compact 3D camera system. Uh, these MPF batteries go on the Zcam E2 as well, so I already had all this stuff. Uh, this is a little small rig thing, costs, I don't know, 40 bucks or whatever. And you have to get a little cable that I also got from Alvin's Cables that connects this funky power thing to this. And once you do all that, you're ready to go with a relatively minor set of adjustments. You have a camera that's highly portable. I mean, people get turned off seeing studio cameras and they think, well, well, I can't really bring that around. Of course you can, just do a little bit of work and you have a very, pretty compact 3D rig. So what confuses me about this camera is they could have sold it as a 3D camera that also can do VR 180. And I think they should have 
marketed this with these lenses, um, actually with a better lens than the one they came with, but they're interchangeable. So this is just a micro four thirds camera. You can just take the lenses off. Any lens you want to put on there works great. It's nothing special. It's just like any other micro four thirds camera. Given that, that means this is a 3D camera. It's not just a VR180 camera. So the K1 Pro's lenses you can choose from, the nice thing is you can pick whatever lens you want because it's not fixed to the lens they came with. So you're going to always get a square format for your video. So, and this doesn't do stills either. It just does video, 30 frames a second. You have 4K and whatever uh, 6K option. Uh, the 4K is just, there's not enough resolution. It's not going to look that great. So I'm always using 6K. But uh, to give you an idea, the, the original lens it came with is the silver one, the early versions of the K1. Later versions came with this Izugar 3.25 millimeter lens. And they both capture more than 180 degree field of view. And the, that's only necessary if you're doing stabilization where you want to stabilize the image and the jitters that the image has on the border, you can, because you're over capturing, you can capture, you know, bring back in some of that stuff that's off the edge of the field of view during stabilization and still have borders that look perfectly good. So in my case, I'm like, there's not enough resolution in VR 180 anyway. So I would rather opt for a totally different lens, which is for doing VR 180, you can get the Mikey 3.5 millimeter circular fisheye this thing has a circle, uh, image circle that perfectly ends up to be 180 degree field of view. So it says 3.5 millimeter lens, but all these lenses, it's not exactly that really. So when you, you have to kind of check on the body you're at. So the way you can tell all this is the original camera, you can see that it circles all within the square of the original frame of video and I didn't like that because you're the pixels are vital getting as many pixels as you can for your VR 180 image is critical because there's already not enough pixels there to begin with this thing it it gives me the perfect 180 degree field of view without having to crop anything so I'm getting the most pixels to the image which is better quality so there's a little bit of a difference between the original lenses both of them shoot more than 180 degrees for sure the mikey it ends up perfectly being able to cover that and when you crop it out and process it with a typical vr 180 process you get a circle with the mikey that is 180 degrees without cropping these two require cropping if you really want to get to 180 degrees i see a lot of people just keep the excessive field of view and then they kind of scallop out the you can see the lens in the other side of the of the frame all the time if you're if you're overshooting, and uh, you really only need to do that if you're trying to stabilize. Uh, if you're not stabilizing, then just going with 180 is better because you got more pixels there. I actually don't even care if if I have to screw the edges up a little bit to to get the image to work. I'd rather have more pixels, but that's if you're really doing VR 180 stuff. I'm shooting a lot with the 7.5 the 7 Mikey. Uh, it's a full frame fisheye. And this gives me a full you know, coverage of the image sensor. And then in post-processing, I'm just taking that image and doing a little bit of dis distortion correction, lens correction distortion to correct vertical lines because this is a fisheye type lens. And then I get basically a wide angle uh, 3D camera out of this thing, basically. The only caveat here is you don't get a 16 by 9 version. It's always going to be square. But in VR, square is okay. I mean, it's... You still see the environment fine and everything like that. But the nice thing is with this camera, you have the option of... You can go with a super wide lens and you can do stabilization and have the borders be perfect still because you're over capturing and then you can recrop and end up at 180 degrees and do all that. Uh, the stuff I like to do is really, uh, I don't really want to go VR 180 because it's extreme. You can also see the huge quality difference between shooting a 7.5, more normal lens, still super wide, but it's a conventional lens. The quality goes up dramatically. So you can see the difference between VR 180's quality at distant objects. It's terrible because there's just all these pixels are stretched across the 180 degree field of view. 
shooting this is far less degrees field of view, so the quality is way better. And, you know, you can use it more as a traditional 3D camera. Now, one of the tricks in post-processing the video that comes out of this thing is Zcam has software that uh, you can do the stitching. They call it Wonder Stitch. And it basically allows you to align the image. It doesn't do a whole lot more. I mean, you're probably going to want to use some other kind of uh, editing software to do color contrast sharpening, all that kind of stuff. But uh, when you're doing VR 180, there's a very specific workflow that you have to go through to correct the, the image that you're going to get. It turns out for the K1 Pro, Google had created a software called the VR 180 Creator. I don't think it exists anymore. You can still find it. And it will take the output from this camera, convert it into a correct VR 180 format, and put the metadata inside there so that players can understand what this is and show it correctly because it's heavily distorted. I go through this process in Vegas. I'm one of the few people that seems to be using Sony Vegas. Well, it's now Magic's Vegas. But the if you're shooting circular fisheye where you really have 180 degree field of view, you end up centering the image, aligning it in 3D first, and then going through whatever stabilization or whatever you want to do, I guess, first. And then the last step is you have to get to an equirectangular equi final product, which is the thing that stretches that circle out to fill a square. And that's what will be posted to YouTube VR so people can look at it in VR or just post it somewhere. Um, when you're doing con more conventional 3D because these lenses are removable, you can put near standard lenses, any lens you want on there that'll fit. It's a little tight here. You don't have a whole lot of room. But if the lens fits here, it's just a 3D camera. You, don't, you can shoot standard uh, focal lengths that don't require any special post-processing. You can do a side-by-side -side final product and you end up with you know, just a normal image. When I shoot this thing, because these are circular, <clears throat> because this is a full-frame fisheye, the 7.5 millimeter lens, this, I only do a distortion correction to take the fisheye effect out, and then I just leave that as a 3D video, and then any player can play it. You just pick the distance you want to be from your frame. When I shoot the uh, VR180 stuff, I'll be using this lens almost certainly. Uh, with this, I'll go through the traditional VR180 process of converting it back to equirectangular. And Sony Vegas does it. Um, you're just required in Sony Vegas to first do what they call a, well, you got to get your left and right images together in one video. And then you go through, there's a plugin that comes with Vegas called uh, Dual D Fish, I think. And it's built to just do that correction of circular fish to uh, rectangular, which is the format that VR180 really wants. Some players like Whirly Gig, which I highly recommend, do a conversion inside the software. So you can do these videos. Don't even, you, you can just not even do any lens correction or any of that stuff. And the player itself, they have fisheye options in that player, the Whirly Gig player. And, or you can do lens basic lens distortion correction in there as well. I'm starting to get away from that because you don't know what player other people are going to be using. You want to bake your distortion correction into the final video. And uh, it's an option for some players to do this with fisheye conversions. A lot of them do have that now. So, you know, even when you're shooting this without any conversion, you can do it. But it gets dicey when you try to make this video public or give it to somebody because you don't know if they know enough to know how to change the settings inside the player they're using. But yeah, the camera's interesting. <clears throat> Literally the biggest regret I have with it is that it doesn't do a 16 by nine aspect ratio. That would be my perfect setup because I could uh, shoot VR 180 or I could just flip to a more conventional lens like this one and get a wider field of view, which is ideal. I do that with other cameras, but with this one, you're stuck with the square format, which seemed like a small thing for them to change because there is a four by three aspect ratio sensor in there, but maybe it's a custom built sensor for this rig. I don't know, but uh, interesting. It's, you know, because I was able to get this at such a good price, it makes it a, a compelling option for me because it's more portable than some of the other rigs I have while it's still high quality. So the, as far as the quality goes, it looks like it shoots at a higher bit rate than this Zcam E1, which I also have as a 3D camera. And with the E1 and the E2, I can shoot VR 180 or any other kind of lens I want with those cameras too. 
The other benefit to this one particularly is the lenses are standard spacing, 65 millimeters apart. 